verse 12, saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. So they're standing before God at this great white throne judgment. Now notice the, it keeps saying right here, the books were opened. So there are many books open. Books, B-O-O-K-S. Now this one we're going to find out later, all right? Keep reading. And another book was opened. Now there's a singular book that's opened. Which is what? Which is the book of life. Ah, that's the book of life over here. So notice over here that we have the book of life. And then over here, we got books, whatever this is. Okay, what is the book of life? The book of life is when you look at verse 15. Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So if their name, see that, that's the point. So these people who are being judged by God, if their names are not found in this book of life, then basically they're cast into the lake of fire right over here where Satan, the false prophet and the Antichrist are at. OK, so that's where they go. Uh, these people. So this book of life is important. Is your name in there or is your name not in there? That's the thing. Now we'll cover this book of life a little bit more later. We want to find out what these books are, right? So what are these books? Let's keep reading. Verse 12 shows you what these books are. And the dead were judged. So all these dead, they're judged out of those things which were written in the books. So anything that's written in this book, that's where they're going to be judged by. So this one's important. This one will tell you what, let's keep reading, according to their works, verse 12. So all their works are in these books. So these books are going to detail everything that they did and judge them according to their works. Whereas this book of life is where their name is in it, then they can go to heaven. If it's not in it, then they go to hell. And then we'll explain a little bit more about this later. Now we want to find out what these books are. All right, they're going to report everything that I've done and judge me. What is those books? That is referring to your 66 books that you got in your King James Bible. You might say, really, the Bible is going to be the thing that will judge me. Yes, let's look at Romans 3. Romans 3. Amen. Now let's see if your let's see if your church will teach that, amen. All right, Romans three. That's why it's important to be in a Bible believing church. Bible believing churches know doctrines like these, but a lot of the other churches they don't teach you doctrine. They just talk about little ditty devotional. That's it. And how are you going to feed and grow your members? You got to know everything as you, much as you can in that book. You got to grow in doctrine. Romans chapter three. Romans chapter 3. Now look at uh, verse 4. This is important. God forbid, a let God be true, but what? Every man a liar. So God has to be true, proven true, and every man has to be proven a liar. But look what the context is. As it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy what? Amen. Okay. Let's go through this. So his sayings here, wait a minute, where do you find what God says? Where do you find what God says? In his book, the Bible. Mm -hmm. All right, but uh, let's, uh, let's just keep that as food for thought. You know, when we go, if I'm going to prove that one plus plus, uh, one plus one plus one plus one equals four, I have to give you all the ones here. That way I can prove it's four, okay? His sayings, he has to be justified in it. Keep reading. And mightest overcome when thou art judged. Wait a minute. 
God is being judged right here and he has to overcome it. These people are being judged by God, actually. The context is when God judges them. Because what is Paul quoting here? He's quoting from Psalms. Go to Psalms 51. Psalms 51 verse 4. Psalms 51 verse 4. That's referring to the judgment of God. The context is referring to the judgment of God. Now remember, these books, what timeline it's in? It's in this judgment of God over here. All right, great white throne judgment. Great white throne judgment. I don't know why I did GWO. I'm half asleep, all right? So it's the great white throne judgment. All right, Psalms chapter 51. All right, notice what the Lord says when he justifies himself. All right, oh, I just lost my context and page here. Let me find it real quickly. All right, be a little bit patient with me here. Verse 4, verse 4. Against thee, thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, See, his word, right? Isn't the Bible his word? Amen. All right. Amen. And be clear when thou what? Oh, wait a minute. When God, when will God judge people? When will God judge people? Right here. He's judging people. But he's going to be what? Clear. Remember Romans 3? He's going to be justified in his what? Sayings. Okay. The, when will God judge people? Right here, right? The great white throne judgment? Yeah. All right. That's the context of Romans 3, Psalms 51, right? Great white throne judgment. In the passage, it shows over here, he's going to be justified in his what? Sayings. His word. The Bible. But also, it says he'll be clear when he speaks. Yep. He has to overcome when they judge him. Ah, why? Because think about it. In the great white throne judgment, when God judges them, what do you think these people are going to do? Their soul is at stake here. They're going to bring up every excuse. Yep. So all the arguments you hear from typical atheists that you have a hard time in witnessing street preaching, visitation, that's not going to work on God. They're going to use the same common arguments and God's going to look at him like he's stupid and he says, didn't you hear what the past one million people said? They said the same excuses like you used, Mr. Atheist. Okay, Richard Dawkins, what's your best excuse, huh? That's unique that I never heard of before. What is your best excuse, Sam Harris, these guys? Oh, tell me what your best excuse, your argument is. I never heard of before. And then all of that is done through his book. Look at John 12. So that's what those books are. These books are the ones that's referring to the Word of God, the Bible, and the Bible itself will be the judge of all these people. So guess what? That's why your soul winning, your street preaching is a precursor and it's a prophecy of these people, of what they're going to taste at the great white throne judgment. Because you're using scripture to judge these people. Didn't the Bible says that? We are to judge them, right? We are to judge the world, right? 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And we're going to see that later on in 1 Corinthians 6. So we're judging them through the word. Why? Because we're trying to get them ready for the great white throne judgment. So if they don't repent and get right during our judgment, guess what? At this final judgment, they will. You're doing basically what God's doing. You're giving them the word of God to judge them, and they have no chance with us. Well, but when they go to the great white throne judgment, they have no chance with God. Look at John chapter 12, verse 48. He that rejecteth me receiveth not my words. Right? The word of God, the Bible, my words. Hath one that judgeth him. What's going to judge him? 
the word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. Boom. So notice right here, the Bible will judge these people at the last day. See, the Bible is referring to the books. No wonder the Lord put 66 books in your King James Bible. Now, we're going to look at Hebrews chapter 4, please. Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews 4. Will the Bible, uh, so remember, these books are supposed to judge every work that they did, right? Every, everything that they did, right? Does the Bible really do that? Yes, it does. Everything you do is not a secret. The Bible knows it reads it, reads you like a book. You think you're reading the book, but the book is reading you like a book, man. The Bible reads you like a book and will expose all the works. Amen. Hebrews chapter 4, <clears throat> verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful. That's the Bible, right? Yeah. Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a what? Discerner of the what? Thoughts and intents of the heart. Wow, what did the Bible say? The Bible says at the judgment, he's going to judge you for all the thoughts and the hearts that you have. Now look at verse 13, 13. What does the Bible do? The Bible does this. Neither is there any creature that is what? Not manifest in his sight. It's all going to be manifested to him. All things are what? Naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. See, that book, you can't hide secrets from it. That book will read you like a book and expose everything you did. So what? all that you need to judge a intellectual college campus is you just need this book right here. You just need this book right here. And for people who tell you that the Bible is not what is used for soul winning, for judging, for preaching, and they try to give you some existential philosophy and uh, intelligent apologetics and science and mathematics to do your uh, to do your witnessing and judgment, and you can cross them off. Right. Or red mark. They're off. Amen. Now I. Now, your pastor believes in using scientific arguments, philosophical arguments, intellectual arguments to uh, better your soul winning to reach these people. But oh, my goodness, if you think that that's your final authority for judging these people, you're at the wrong judgment. God says he uses his word. Mm -hmm. This is the final authority. Right. And then you can use all other subjects to build this up even higher and elevate it even more. All right, now let's go back. Bible study is so boring, isn't it? Uh, churches, you know, they realize Bible study is so boring, so they drop it down to 15-minute devotional and 30 minutes to one hour of video games and talking, talking, talking. If there's one thing that I want to see talking is that word and not your mouth, bless God. All right, now let's go back to Revelation 20. So they were judged, uh, look at the last part of verse 12, according to their works, right? All right, so their works are being judged over here. So then now the question is, okay, how will this judgment entail? First one is a reminder. Go to Revelation 11. So first one's a reminder, which is Revelation chapter 11. I don't know. Yeah, okay, so I got some space here. Revelation 11 shows you that the judgment will consist of saints that are outside of the Christian church. So if these include saints of all time outside of the Christian church, why outside of the Christian church? Because remember I talked to you last time, these, the Christian church already had their judgment. The judgment seat of Christ in Revelation 19 showed you an expiration date on that judgment for Christians. So then you got the Old Testament, the tribulation, and then the millennium saints.
So the Old Testament tribulation and millennium saints, these are the people who go to the great white throne judgment and have and receive their rewards. And when they look at the book of life, their names will be written on it. Remember, names can be wiped out of the book of life. We saw that in Revelation chapter 2 and 3. Why is this distinguished from Christians though, right? So let's look at one at a time. So this doctrine is called dispensationalism. It is very important to understand that. You got to understand dispensationalism, dispensational salvations. By understanding this, it will it'll be a huge unlocking eye-opener to all the doctrines in the Bible, and it'll click like that, everything. So let's do this. So then, uh, why are names able to be wiped out of the book of life? Because the reason why is that's applied to tribulation saints. Their salvation is different from the Christian church. The Christian church, so let's put, let's put it over here. Put a separate thing over here. The Christian church over here, their names are written in the book of life, and it cannot be wiped away, actually. They are eternally secured. Their names are written in heaven. So why is their name not wiped out of the book of life? Because the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4, and your pastor showed this to you many times, is that, in Ephesians 4, 30, and Ephesians 1, 13 through 14, when you're sealed with the Holy Ghost, no matter how much you sin, you're Amen. sealed all the way to the rapture, yeah, to the day of redemption. So your name is written in the book of life. Ephesians 1 says you're predestinated. See, your destiny is already settled. And the church age... Their salvation is by grace through faith, not by works. Remember that? So that's why no matter how many times they've sinned against God, their name cannot be wiped out of the book of life. Why? Because they're saved by faith, not by what? Works. But in this judgment, they're judged according to their what? Works. And it depends if their name is in the book of life too, right? Over here, you're simply you're simply seen and checked out on your salvation based on the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ by faith. That's what the Lord's checking you out in. Whereas these things over here, they're being judged according to their works over here. That's why it makes so much sense where you see verses in the Bible about losing salvation, doing works with your faith for salvation, uh, your name being wiped out of the book of life. But then these verses contradict with verses that shows no matter how many times you're sin, you've sinned, you're saved. It also talks about that it's nothing of your work but just faith alone. So then how do we get these verses to reconcile? These verses here are applied to the church. And these verses here are referring to the Old Testament tribulation and millennium saints over here. Okay, so uh, let's look at a couple passages over here. Did I give a verse? Sorry, my memory's bad. Did I give a verse or no? Revelation yeah, thank you. Revelation 11. So look at this judgment. Look at verse 18. The nations were angry, thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead. Oh, wait a minute. Time of the dead, that's Revelation 20, right? The dead being judged. Time of the dead, that they should be judged. But look at this. This is a reward system, not just damning lost souls. A reward system of saved believers. And that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, Old Testament, and to the saints, Tribulation and millennium, and uh, tribulation, and them that fear thy name, small and great, millennium, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. Look at that. See, there's a reward system over here. It's not just damnation. It's a reward system at the great white throne judgment. 
So then, who's getting the rewards here? These saints. This is the only explanation. Otherwise, where are you going to put these saints at? There's no other judgment. Remember, the judgment of nations is simply a judgment of entering the millennium over there and uh, taking care of the Jews during the tribulation. The judgment seat of Christ, that's only for saved Christians in the church, which takes place when we're raptured before the tribulation and we're being judged during the tribulation. See that? So see, you have to put separate judgments, separate salvations, separate time periods, separate groups of people and believers. That way the verses can line up nicely and it makes sense. There's no contradiction. 